go on to our Where Are They Now feature. Until recently, my next guest was TV's King of Chat. Wittier than Wogan, smarter than Jonathan Rost, more up to date than Michael Parkinson. But where is he now? Well, most of the time he's in Norwich, but he's here tonight, so please welcome Alan Partridge. That's right. Um, <laughs> you, you were working at the chat shows, weren't you? You were, you were right up there. Where, what's happened? What, what well, happened to your show? I, 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 you know, I thought I was working at it when, when chat shows think were at the peak, but I, I think I got out while the, uh, while the going was good. Fair point, yeah. Because yeah, some people do say the chat show is dead. Uh, maybe it's just this one, I don't know. But, yeah. uh, you know. Well, uh, no, I mean, you're making a joke there, you know, but... Um, <laughs> There, there is a serious point, yes. you know, which is that uh, people people fade. Yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Michael Parkinson, where's he now? Well, he's coming back on. I think he's uh, not he? tonight, but he's, yeah. he's back next yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But your it, style. It'll, it'll bomb. Yeah. <laughs> What's your secret of how to do a good interview? It's I don't know. It's it's, it's not an exact science, not like physics or biology. Um, <laughs> But it, it's, I, if, if, for example, I was interviewing um, someone like uh, Idi Amin. Right. Um, a lot of people think Idi Amin, butcher, you know, mm. murdered a lot of people in Uganda. But uh, w when you meet him, there's a whole other side to his character. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah. he's, uh, he's tremendously good at Connect Four. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. And you'd bring that out of him? Of course. Yeah. I, I mean, for example, we all know the stories about him putting his wife's head in a fridge. Yeah. Now, I'd obviously want to broach that, but I, I wouldn't say, Idi, what's all this about putting your wife's head in a fridge? Yeah. That, that would be too obtuse. Um, what, what I, I'd simply say something like, um, Eddie, um, have you got any, any anecdotes about your time when you were boss of Uganda? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking here about fridges. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yes. I, I'm not on a wing. Now, why did the, why did the BBC uh, axe your show? Do you, do you know why? Do you uh, well, it's, it was, uh, I mean, I, they, I, I had a number of problems. I shot a man dead. Yes. Uh, well, actually, I remember I, that. No, yeah. well, it was cleared at a subsequent inquiry. I mean, All right, OK. I was found guilty of a minor offence of uh, unlicensed use of a firearm. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's yeah. petty. And they held that against you, so you're, and so you're now on Radio Norwich. Now, is that a... Is that a... <laughs> Is you happy being on Radio Norwich? Is, is, it's uh, always good to finish the sentence. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's just dead air. Yes, it's dead right. time. Yeah, you um, just look as though you're going to answer, but uh, no, no, I was waiting to not. finish. I'm not, I'm not that, not that rude. All right. Um, <laughs> different technique. Yes. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, uh, Radio Norwich is for me. It's a very exciting time to be there. Yes. Um, because, Why would that be? Well, because um, Nick Peacock, who, who's in charge, do you know? I know. No, well, no. No, Nick's, Nick's was in charge of the big revamp there. Mm. Um, he was behind the controversial decision to go thrice weekly with Sonia Mannion's Norfolk Nights. Right. Which, uh, yeah. Did that work? He, got, he got a lot of flack, but it paid off. Yeah. yeah it works. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So you went to him and he put you straight on to. I, I went there and said, I'd said, you know, Nick, um, what can I do? And he said, do what you like because uh, he's my cousin. All right. <laughs> and and you, you chose the. Uh, 4.30 a.m. to 7 o'clock slot, pre-breakfast hour. The pre-breakfast slot. Some people call it the graveyard slot, and they're people who are bitter. Yes. Because, um, I, my audience is divided to early morning uh, farmers yeah. and late night returning ravers. Right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I'm pleased. I mean, at one point, it looked like... Uh, horror of horrors, I was going to be on Radio Ipswich, you know, with, with that bunch of losers. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but no, with Radio Norwich, I'm on an even yeah. keel. Right. So what, what do you think now, you look as a, as a bit of an outsider now, what do you think of the current state of British television? The, the, there are some presenters who, you know, there's a fine line, for example, between, you know, having a bit of a jape, a bit of yeah. a joke, um, a bit of a, 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 a humorous uh, uh, dig at yeah. someone, yeah. Uh, and just being plain rude. Yes. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and, and where, where would that line be, do you think? <laughs> Um, behind you. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you, and what do you think of, what do you think of like sort of spoof chat show hosts or pretend ones like uh, Larry Sanders? You know, it's a very, very funny show. Larry Sanders. I, Have you seen that? Very good. I don't quite get the joke. <laughs> I don't see it, no. Hello. <laughs> Uh, can you explain it, please? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see anything of, of you in that? You didn't see the way uh, a talk show in America's put together, the way your one might have been put together? Well, we weren't scared of asking difficult questions. Um, some questions that were, if you like, irrelevant. Um, <laughs> but we would ask them, and we would ask uncomfortable questions, which would sometimes lead to people, you know, walking off. I don't know if you've experienced uh, oh, that. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I've had that just recently. Uh, but 
so far I haven't killed anyone, but I'm willing to make an exception tonight. So, <laughs> now, there is a, so, I say you're not on television at the moment, but there is a sort of, I don't know, sort of fly-on-the-wall documentary on, on you at the moment, on BBC uh, Two, yes, Monday night. I was, I was, I'm very angry about that, because yeah. I was misled right. into thinking that they were going to study the life of a chancellor. It's, it's come out not the way... No. I, I would have wanted. And well, with your experience on television, you, you would have realised that things are bound to go wrong when you agree to a documentary like that. <laughs> um. no. But it shows you, uh, is it your lowest ebb? You know, you're staying in a, in a hotel, is that...? No, Lin Linton Travel Tavern is a very... <laughs> It's actually a very, very pleasant place to stay. Yes. It's, it's, um, it's a lot of people know, but it has a fantastic carvery. <laughs> now, the other thing that you're perhaps noted for is your, your fashion sense and your style. Is this something you deliberately work on, or just I, you just naturally? Um, I tell you it, who inspired me to some extent was uh, Ian Woosnam, the uh, Welsh golf champ. Yes. Who I saw at uh, Gatwick Airport uh, wearing an ordinary sweater, just like all the other ones, but he turned round and lovely touch this. He had seven suede stars on the back. Yeah. Lovely little touch, yeah. just sort of elevated him above the, the airport rabble. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> duty free cigarettes and, yeah. and, and their fat children. Yeah. Uh. Now, the other thing that we've, uh, the documentary's rather intruded into is your, your, your personal life, your private life, which I don't normally go on about. But I, I don't like to talk about it. No, you don't, no. But uh, is there any chance of you getting back together with your, your wife, do you think? Uh, did you hear the answer to the question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you don't want to talk about that? No. no. OK, fair enough. So, uh, what, what are your plans for you? I mean, basically, what happened was yeah. my wife... Um, <laughs> moved, moved, she, she, she moved out. Uh, she, well, she kicked me out. She's living with a fitness instructor. You know, All right. Idiot. Yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, the, 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 the real focus of my life are my children, right. uh, Denise and Fernando. Right. Um, yes. uh, Fernando's just left Cambridge. Oh, excellent. Uh, Cambridge University, yeah. that is. Not, not the area. No. Um, he's... Uh, he's I, I'm, I'm, he's working for the UN doing sort of uh, aid relief and wasting his life, you know. Yeah, um, they're not going into broadcasting. No, no. And then Denise, I was worried about her. She was in working for the ICA doing experimental action art. Yeah, um, yeah I, said, I, I said to her, you know, never mind ICA, why not join ICI? Yeah. I was making a joke. Yes. Um, yeah. But uh, there was a serious point behind it, and I'm pleased to say now that she's doing very well as uh, uh, one of the senior managers for Freeman Hardy Willis. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> And, and being a chat show host, is that is that gone now? You, is that appeared behind you, or you might you back into that? Parkinson's come back. Well, if it back. appears behind me, I'm more likely to back into it. Mm. But, uh, mm. I prefer it's in front of me, then yes. I can see where I'm going. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, th I mean, I don't I don't want to mount a campaign. You know, so that that would be responsible. But if you know people want to write to their MPs and uh, yeah, that's up to them. Yes. Well, I'm sure they're they're inspired to do that now. Thank you for joining us tonight, Alan Partridge. <laughs> My final guest tonight has been beautiful, talented, funny and sexy longer than I've been beautiful, talented, funny and conceited. Her recent starring role on television fortunately provides a fantastic way of introducing her. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the absolutely fabulous Joanna Lumley. the biggest cheer we've had for, for weeks and weeks on this oh, show. Thank you. You're, thank you. Uh, but I was sort of trying to imply that you've, uh, you're, you know, that's your, you know, the role you've had at the moment, absolutely fabulous. Patsy, yeah. Patsy, but, but you've, you've been down this route before because you had, you were Purdy in the New Avengers and people said, oh, you like Purdy, you like that in real life, and now you've got and Patsy. Then, then 20 years went by and, and, and I sort of went into a sort of, well, in fact, I worked quite hard, but I appeared to have gone into a complete decline. Yeah. And Jennifer and her great sort of, you know, generosity of spirit, um, see me lying in the gutter, scrape me out and put me in <laughs> But uh, this particular role is a very strong uh, character. Now, how did Jennifer put it to you? We've got this heavy drinking, she, uh, she chain no, no. smoking... I've uh... never met Jennifer. No. When I got the part, I'd never yeah. met her. And I was terribly afraid. I yeah. think she and Dawn are the most frightening women on television. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I went along to meet Jennifer. And Jennifer is pretty sort of, you know, monosyllabic sometimes about yeah. what she wants you to do. She's sort of... Just, uh -uh. 
and I, d I didn't know. It didn't, it didn't say how she was to be. It yes. didn't say. And I went, yes. actually, to tell you the truth, Vita, I had a bit of a rehearsal. And I went home and said to my agent, I think I've got to turn this job down. I didn't think I understand what she wants. So you're What's actually on bottle? near to turning it down? Near to turning it down. My agent, very shrewdly, <laughs> spotted there could be a shilling in the offer. Yes. And so he said, yeah. do it. Yeah. So I sort of stuck it. And eventually, you know, you sort of work your way through it. But it was brand new because she'd worked out kind of Adina's character, having tried out with Dawn before, but Patsy didn't really exist. Yeah. And so later, it seems much to come later, from you told a lot. Is, is, did you sort of she stamp told me your... I'd done it completely wrong. It was not yeah. at all what she wanted. She didn't tell me this last month. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but do people say, oh, you, are you, you know, when you're walking in the street, people say, oh, you're Patsy. Yeah, tragic. Actually, going around the supermarket is a bad one because I'm sort of primly going around getting my sort of vegetarian nuts and wheat and yeah. sort of tragic things. One small bottle of red wine. People say, that's not enough for you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, dead right. They're quite right. Yeah. So I go back and get some. Do you have all the, all the booze delivered? Yeah. Obviously, you can cover that again. <laughs> Now, this has been taken up in America, the, uh, the ab ab absolutely fabulous to be shown in America. So do you go to ab fab conventions no, and the I people with big hair to, and Ivana Trump come and welcome I haven't been able to, but I've, I have actually met lots of, um, uh, lots of Patsy lookalikes. Some men, some women, some simultaneously. I mean, yeah. it's just <laughs> shattering. Most of them look a great deal more like me than I do yeah. myself. Yeah. Well, Patsy's quite easy to copy because you just get the big hair, yeah. the, the cigarette, yeah. the glass, and you just, well, what yeah. was it all <laughs> <laughs> And you get the heels yeah. and, you know, stagger a bit and you're away. And it's great you can do the show if you happen to have got drunk a bit. You're fine, because you're just uh, <laughs> getting into character, aren't you? I know. The difficult thing was smoking so much. I do smoke a bit, but not like that. The very worst moment was having to light, I think, about four cigarettes yeah. simultaneously and to dra drag them in. Yeah. I nearly blacked out, forgot all my lines. So they said, we had to go and do it again. So I had to yeah. light the whole yeah. thing again. Well, that's because <laughs> you, you got to smoke in the taxi, so you were... That's yeah. right. Yeah. But you're responsible for two great haircuts, because you had the, the, the Purdy was a sort of haircut that everyone did, and, uh, and, the, and the Patsy. It's all I am, really. And all I've got just, is the Hagee. <laughs> <laughs> just as a series of moving wigs is all I am, you know. <laughs> not at all, not at all. But uh, uh, between times, you said you were, you were doing plays and films and sort of stuff. And, of course, your voice is used to sell so many things in adverts. You've got such a seductive voice. Now, I, I, is that you, or do you have to put that on? No, that's... Well, I do put it on a bit. <laughs> you, you can hear this sort of voice, but actually, you know, you tend to speak a little bit lower and a little bit... So you croon over the microphone yeah. a bit. If they want that, sometimes they want sort of crisp... Buy it now! It's in the basement! You know, yeah, but, <laughs> but they so, don't book you for that. They, no, they, so, no, they don't, so, actually, no. <laughs> no, but there's another side to you as well, which is emerging in... You've got a documentary out. Uh, about a trip to Bhutan, yes. which shows you uh, roughing it uh, quite a lot, because Bhutan is a pretty out-of-the-way kind of place, isn't it? It's pretty out of the way. If you think of India coming down, my friends, like that, with yeah. Ceylon down there, and the Himalayas go around the top, Bhutan yeah. is sort of on the right-hand side, i.e. on the east of Nepal. Yeah. It's a Himalayan kingdom. It comes from subtropical right up to 27, 28,000 foot mountains. Why, why did you go there? Explain. I went there to follow in the footsteps of my grandfather, who had been in, the 19, in 1931, had travelled across Bhutan with my grandmother, my aunt, and my great-aunt, and 90 mules and pack camels and yaks and horses, presents, servants, whatever, from India, in fact, in Sikkim and Tibet, but his, he, he was a political officer, which is like being an ambassador, really. Right. And the King of Bhutan invited him over. And the government of India said, hang on, while you're about it, King George V has just given the King of Bhutan the KCIE, which is um, sort of knight, made, made him a knight, an honorary knight, yeah. uh, knight commander of the, the Indian, Indian, Indian Empire. Empire. Yeah. Would you go and give him the insignia? Yeah. I said, spot on. <laughs> so it was <laughs> January, snow in the Himalayas, and they walked the whole way across, half riding, half walking, camping every night. My, my grandfather had one of the earliest wind-up cameras, yeah. which did about 30 seconds. Brilliant black and white film, which we've incorporated. Yeah, into this film. so you, you go from Bhutan, what is it, 50, 60 years ago yeah, to, to, to us Bhutan now. today, and it's rather similar. It, it hasn't changed. Yeah. Because the present king, who's quite young, he took over when he was about 17, I think. He's now only in his early 40s. Um, he decided that he didn't want the Western, or rather the developed world, to come into his kingdom. He didn't want the in outside influences, so he won't allow television. Yeah. So they have no notion of television. Right. So although we were making a television film, there was no sense of, you know, people in the background going... <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they hadn't so got the idea... So what did they think you were doing? They, well, they knew we were yeah. filming, but yeah. because they didn't have the idea of appearing on a screen and becoming famous overnight, yeah. they had no interest in it. So they weren't saying, oh, there's Patsy Stone. No, they didn't do. say Patsy yeah, Stone. Get her a drink, all. yes. And um, <laughs> he's, he's decided... No, they didn't say that at all. No. <laughs> um, they, he, he decided that everybody should wear the, the ancient traditional costumes, yeah. which is, a, men it's called a go and for women it's called a kira. The men is like a huge dressing gown, which you sort of reef up with a belt and ha it bags over. And into that, rather like here tonight, yeah. 
This is rather a stretchy go, not quite right. But oh, you sorry, see, that was the, cro the crossover. Yes. You could put your wallet and knives and daggers and yeah. an eating bowl in there. Right. I mean, this is obviously not what Mrs. Betty Jackson. It's clearly, you know, what clearly. am I saying? <laughs> Clearly, the, the there's no eating bowl no, in no there. I can, see, I can see what's in there. But you, you were sort of suffering it because you're, you're camping out in quite we camped, cold weather, we we rainy tried... weather. At the end, you're looking a bit fed up with the whole thing. Looking process, a bit tragic. Yes. Well, you see, it was, we went in October, which is a you very good cousin. weather. Yeah. I went with my girl yeah. cousin because it was her mother who went as a 17 year old. My mother was still at school, too little to go. Yeah. And um, we decided to do some of it by sort of ca the way they'd done it, which was camping and trekking. They'd taken two months, we only had three and a half weeks. Mm. So we did a bit of camping and trekking with, with ponies and mules and sleeping under canvas. And then a little bit of hotels. Yes. And you, then you go into a, you did get into a Land Rover, didn't you? Also? A little bit of a Land Rover. So it's a little and bit. Then, yes. Well, we had to. A little, a little, little bit like doing fair. the, a uh, little, little bit doing the marathon and catching a yes, bus I know, halfway around. Yeah. But uh, the, I know. Uh, and then you, you sort of skulk out. And then, yeah. then you did a bit more. Then we did a bit of walking and just camping. But it was lucky when you were trying to get the thing commissioned that your grandfather had done this fantastic Thank journey. Goodness. Actually, that, yes, that, that was the thing. It was, it sort of pivoted on that because yes. it's a difficult. Place. My grandfather's trip from Glasgow to Rothsey every year isn't well, going to. Do something about it. Come on, I'll be there. I think it's quite interesting. I mean, I love families. As someone gets older, actually, when you're young, you're really sort of bored stiff about a lot of it. And you go, oh, really, great aunt, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But later, as you get on, as you yeah. get on, and you realise that you've reached the peak of the hill and you're looking down the other side, <laughs> you go, good grief, how fascinating. Yeah. I forgot that people were alive and, and well. Yeah. Who's done that lovely song called Help the Aged? Is uh, it Jarvis Cox? Yes, it is, yes. Yeah. I thought it was marvellous. I haven't heard much of it, except I suddenly heard it in the car yeah. coming here. Yes. Help the Aged, I thought... Spot on. It's not about you. You're, <laughs> not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not who he's thinking of at all. No, I okay, think, but, uh, uh, right. no it's a, <laughs> a good story. So what's next? You've got a film that I've seen called uh, Prince Valiant. Did you see you, that? I did. I good man. All the way from the beginning to the end. Actually, uh, I think it's a boy's film. You know, it's, got, it's got a stunning amount of, of um, broadsword fighting and yes. smashing and crashing. It's set in ancient times. It's, it's set always in difficult. Arthurian yes, times. always a difficult period to Quite capture. difficult. But I thought it looked sensational. It had a lot of money spent on it. A lot of money tell, spent yes. on it. But and there's then, only a little bit of you. You come at the beginning oh, and then the end. And the end. I don't want to spoil how it ends for you, but it's pretty ghastly. Pretty so, ghastly. Yeah. But um, I enjoy this. You know, sometimes you don't want to sort of blot a film out completely with your dazzling presence. Which is... <laughs> 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 uh, you, you play Arthur's uh, I, uh, sister Morgan or something. Morgan Le Fay. Yes, yes, sort of, yes um, disenfranchised sister. Very good. Very good hot kit I get to wear. And um, yeah. they lit it. Lots they of makeup. up your world. Oh, uh, they had a lot in those days. Yeah. We actually had a quick check-up. We said, look, with all this frock, what are we going to do? Did they have eye makeup in those days? And we all went, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Nights at the round table, certainly, darling. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, acting is a, is a glamorous life, but it, it looks like a, a stressful life as well because you've always got to be looking for the I next know, thing. Quite, every time, yeah. every time the play, the last curtain yeah. goes down, you're out yeah. of work. You have no security, yeah. and that's quite nice. I like it. I mean, I'm different now because I'm amazingly rich, as you can imagine. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in the old days, my gosh, you know, it's hand yeah. to mouth. All right, so you've got the documentary of your trip to Bhutan and a book to go with it, and oh, it's uh, so kind of used to say. Yes, well, I'd like to mention these. You're a bit of a babe. <laughs> 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 Coming from you. Anyway, it's been a joy talking to you. Obviously, but there may be some questions from people in the audience. Something in the front row. Right? Will you actually go and see the new Avengers film, or will you avoid it like the plague? I got to say this just in the secrecy of our television studio. <laughs> <laughs> that for me, Patrick McNee is Steed. He is Steed. He invented that character. And I love people taking things on and doing it. I love the idea of James Bond being played by lots of different actors. But Steed is McNee. Yeah. And I just wish they'd made it, s it was his son or something. So, I think it'll yeah. be a dazzling film. I'm sure it'll be from yeah. a fan. Tempted by a cameo as well, though. That was going to be my question. <laughs> <laughs> Could be me talking. It's, it's up here. You're Actually, to tell you the truth, they were sweet enough to ask me. Yeah, and why didn't you? Have you done it? Or I was so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I was so busy and so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need more questions? Yeah, right at the back. Let's go. Blonde hair at the back. Would you like to live your life like Patsy out of Absolutely Fabulous? Oh, darling, she'd be dead. She's actually not alive, because every time we refer to her, she's had more organs removed. <laughs> she's got nothing now. She's got an esophagus and sort of well, you something tragic forward. under there. You I don't projected know. forward to when she, she'd grown old disgracefully. Yes, so. that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did that frighten you to see yourself, you know, made to look old and crabbed oh, like we, that? We went out, we had to do that out in somewhere like Gerard's Cross, that particular scene. Well, and that was we, bad enough got... for you, I should imagine. You've never, <laughs> you've never been Gerard's, Gerard's Cross. Cross. No, and we had these nightmares, prosthetics on, which had taken about four and a half hours. Brilliant. We'd laughed ourselves sick sitting in them. And then I put my nice false teeth in. We were sitting in the bus going out to Gerard's Cross, and I said, oh, with the traffic lights, I waved at some people <laughs> with my nasty teeth in. So I went, hello, and they went, oh, it's John and <laughs> <laughs> 
people are so cruel. Uh, there the blue shirt. Are there, are there any acting parts that you were ever offered and then you turned them down and then later regretted turning them down? What I, what I do hate is, is when a part that you feel you were so right for goes to somebody else. And apart from the sheer jealousy and the sort of impecunious feeling, you look at it and you realise you yeah. were the right one, and right. that's agony. Well, but you've got to let it go. Is there a part in EastEnders or something you thought, oh, <laughs> Barbara Windsor, that's my part. So you go, yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. you were in Coronation Street. I was uh, Beth Lynch. Yes, no, no, no. No, you weren't. Right. <laughs> no, I wasn't. No, I, I'd nearly married Ken Barlow. Ken Barlow. Well, that's a fate. I know. To be spared. I'd it was have only in eight episodes, but golly. Yeah. But I can't reimagine you in uh, Coronation Street. Were you? Were I was you, terribly posh. You... They, they lost their nerve. They'd cast me, and they said, "I said, shall I do a Manchester accent?" They said, "No, <laughs> speak in your voice." And I said, "Well, where shall I be?" And they said, "You sit in this room, unpicking wireless sets and put things together, and drinking sherry to show you're posh." That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I never went into the Rovers, and I just sat there going, "Hello, Ken." I mean, it was <laughs> really baroque little part. And was Ken keen to marry you? I yeah, imagine Matt he would be. He's not keen to marry anybody. He, no, he was very it? keen. Yeah. He was keen on yeah. me. Took me to see a house. And I said, <laughs> and I said, no, the street's boring. You can imagine how popular I was. I said, no, it's very boring, Coronation Street. I'm leaving. I said. Yes. And, and that left, was it. And that was it. Yeah, you should have just changed the words a bit. You could have been in there. That for was the, rest the year. Of your life. That was the year. After that, I had a year when I earned tragedy sixty pounds in one year. <laughs> but it was worth a lot of money in those days. Sixty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Not that old. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Joanna Lumley. <laughs> Don't forget to uh, stay in or set your vids for men behaving badly. They think it's all over. And Clive next week from 9.30. Peter Mandelson is just one of the guests on Question Time, which is next on BBC One.